This is Science Friday. I'm Flora Lichtman. If you tuned into the news at all this week, you likely heard this new medical guidance from the Trump administration. Acetaminophen. Is that okay? Yes. Which is basically commonly known as Tylenol during pregnancy can be associated with a very increased risk of autism. So taking Tylenol is uh, not good. You may have also heard the backlash to this advice from many experts who disagree and worry about the risks of avoiding Tylenol during pregnancy. And then there are concerns coming from the autistic community around the narrative that autism is inherently bad, a scourge that needs to be eliminated. And there are concerns that moms are being blamed for having autistic children. There is a lot to unpack about genetics, about vaccines. But today, I want to focus on the acetaminophen piece. If I saw these headlines while I was pregnant, I would want the nitty gritty where this idea came from, and what exactly researchers have found. So today, we are digging into the details with an epidemiologist who led one of the largest peer-reviewed studies looking at this exact question. What do we know about the link between acetaminophen and autism? Dr. Brian Lee is an epidemiologist at Drexel University and the senior author on a paper in JAMA about acetaminophen use during pregnancy and children's risk of autism and other neurodevelopmental outcomes. Brian, welcome to Science Friday. Hi, thank you for having me. So this Tylenol link to autism claim, you know, didn't come out of nowhere. You have looked at this association yourself. What made you decide to study this in the first place? Well, you know, acetaminophen is one of the most widely used medications in the world, and I think it is proper to question whether or not a medication during pregnancy is going to be safe. Uh, our team looked at the available evidence, and basically there are methodological limitations to the existing evidence that our study wanted to overcome. Before we get into your study, I mean, what was the available evidence? Because the fact sheet provided by the administration cites this review article, for example, from the Journal of Environmental Health that looks at over 40 studies and finds over half of them show this association between taking Tylenol in pregnancy and autism. We invited one of those authors on the show, by the way, and, and she declined. But can you tell me a little bit about this review and, and what your reservations were about the evidence? Sure. Um, so this review, uh, it's important to know it's just a new look at old existing studies. Um, and they, they looked at somewhere over 40 studies of acetaminophen use and uh, various neurodevelopmental outcomes. And the conclusion they came up with was that based on the available evidence, acetaminophen use during pregnancy was associated with increased risk of autism. The problem, however, is that uh, association is not causation, right? Right. Okay, let's talk about the study that you did. Um, what was your approach to this question? Yeah, so our, our study relied on looking at this amazing data resource um, of 2.5 million pregnancies, looking at the mothers and their children followed for over 20 years in Sweden. Um, importantly, we didn't you know, ask a mom, hey, uh, 20 years ago, what did you take during your pregnancy, right? Like, this was something that we were able to look at uh, midwife interviews at their uh, prenatal visits, um, where they asked questions about medication use. And we also had uh, prescription drug records available. And then we also had the sort of electronic health record. But there's a couple uh, missing pieces here, right? Like, the reason you take acetaminophen is, you know, like you have a headache, you have an infection, fever, uh, pregnancy pain, stuff like that, right? Is it going to be captured in data sources? Our data, for example, only captures receipt of clinical services. So if you just have a random headache, you're not necessarily going to go into the you know, hospital to get that checked out, right? So you don't know why people are taking the Tylenol? Uh, not necessarily, right? You can try and adjust for statistical differences with the data you have. But if there, if, if you don't have data on something, you can't adjust for it or account for it, okay? Mm -hmm. And so these indications for use of acetaminophen, migraines, uh, headache, infection, fever, these sorts of things, incidentally, are 
associated with increased risk of autism. So there's already the possibility right there that it's not necessarily the acetaminophen that is increasing risk, but the reason you're taking it. Okay, let me see if I can sum that up. So one of the reasons why doing these epidemiological studies to try to untangle this link is one of the reasons it's difficult to do them is that you don't have data on why people are taking the Tylenol. And the reason people might be taking the Tylenol also could be a risk factor for the outcomes that you're looking at. Exactly. So um, it basically comes down to this. What you want is an apples to apples comparison of the women who use acetaminophen versus the women who don't use. But users of medication are going to be different in many different ways from non-users. And the, the biggest thing, of course, is you, you don't take medication for fun. You're taking it for a health reason, right? And so the women who use acetaminophen are going to be uh, sicker in some way than mm. non-users. Mm. And so what you're really doing then is an apples to oranges comparison. Mm. Um, and this makes it challenging to look at the effects of acetaminophen on neurodevelopmental outcomes. Okay. That's one of the challenges. How do you get around it? Yeah. And then I should mention the elephant in the room that people don't often talk about in these studies is genetics, right? So autism and other neurodevelopmental disorders, they are highly heritable. Interestingly enough, mom's genetic risk for neurodevelopmental disorders like autism and ADHD has also been linked with greater pregnancy pain, headaches, migraines, uh, more use of pain relief medications, and in fact, more use of acetaminophen. So if your genetic profile makes you more likely to have a child with autism because of genetics alone, you may also experience more pain in your pregnancy, you know, that you might treat then with Tylenol. Exactly. Right. So you can see this is a really uh, complex issue because yeah. um, you're trying to isolate out the independent effect of acetaminophen, if there is one, right? But you have all of these other factors at play here. And in these large population-based studies, I should mention that our study uh, has you know 2.5 million pregnancies. The basis of uh, most of these arguments um, by the administration are on studies the largest caps out around like 50,000 pregnancies or so. Um, but the the basis of this uh, of these studies, they, they usually do not have genetic information. Um, we didn't either, but we were able to get around this with a statistical approach. Um, I think that's kind of interesting. So we actually have the entire population of Sweden at our disposal. We have family units where... We can go and look for the families where there were uh, one sibling who was exposed to acetaminophen in the womb and uh, compare their outcomes to their unexposed sibling. And uh, what happened was, you know, without the sibling control, we saw the exact same statistical association that, oh, acetaminophen supposedly increases risk of autism. But when we did the sibling control analysis, that small statistical association completely flatlined. It disappeared. In other words, there was no evidence to support that acetaminophen causes uh, autism. Okay, so you looked at families where there were m multiple siblings, and there were, these were pregnancies where the parent took Tylenol during one pregnancy but not the other. And then you compared to see, did those kids who were exposed to Tylenol you know, in utero, did they have a higher likelihood of having autism than their sibling? And the answer was no. Exactly. Because if acetaminophen really does cause autism, then the sibling who is exposed to it should have a higher probability of autism than the sibling who is not exposed, right? Right. One of the findings of the review study cited by the administration is that it looked like dose mattered, that prolonged use of Tylenol in pregnancy, you know, taking Tylenol for over four weeks resulted in this stronger association with autism. Is that evidence of causation? This is one of those things where you could potentially look at it two different ways. Like, oh, yeah, um, if you take it for longer, that must that's this clear dose response, you know. Um, but our take on this is that um, 
why are you taking it for longer? It's because you have more infection, you have more pregnancy pain, you just have more of that health condition, right? So yeah, it's not, it, in my opinion, it doesn't strongly support uh, the argument for causality. How would you counsel a pregnant person in your family? You know, we know there are risks of not treating fevers during pregnancy. And at the same time, anyone who's been pregnant knows that so much of pregnancy is navigating these uncertainties. So what would you tell them? And do you think there's any reason for caution around using Tylenol when you're pregnant? I, I mean, I, I think caution is warranted for everything, right? Like just because um, walking on the street is uh, safe, statistically safe, doesn't mean you shouldn't like keep your eyes open and watch out for the banana peel, right? But, you know, bringing it back to acetaminophen, like it, the, uh, the strongest and best evidence available to date doesn't suggest that uh, acetaminophen causes autism, right? But that doesn't mean, of course, that you, you start popping acetaminophen like candy. Uh, acetaminophen has a known uh, liver toxicity issue, right? And mm. so, I, I mean, long story short, the evidence to date suggests no causal effect of acetaminophen on autism. And um, folks can do with that what they will. I think that's the perfect place to leave it. Thank you for joining us today, Brian. All right. Thank you. Dr. Brian Lee is an epidemiologist at Drexel University who studies maternal medication use during pregnancy and child neurodevelopmental outcomes. I know this is a conversation that is so personal for so many of us um, and that there's so much misinformation around neurodivergence, which is why we want to keep covering this on Science Friday. And we would like you in this conversation what questions do you have about the science of autism? Call us, 877-4-SCI-FRI. Today's episode was produced by Rasha Aridi and Dee Peter Schmidt. But a lot of folks help make this show happen every single week, including... Jordan Smudgek. Emma Gomez. Valissa Mayers. Santiago Flores. I'm Flora Lichtman. Thanks for listening. <laughs>